All right, three, two, one, go. What could this possibly be? I wonder. Zero pause. Wow. Uh, the fact that this run exists is an absolute miracle. Yes. Yeah. Go ahead. The trick that made it possible hasn't even existed for a week. It, it was literally found three or four days ago. It was found February 17th, and this is February 21st. Just to give some perspective, um, this, like, the watching the previous Lotad, the one we just watched, that was announced, I think, like, two days before um, this trick was found that made this possible. So this is, like, a last-minute, barely-got-out-in-time kind of thing. So, yeah, this will be a run where Ocarina of Time will be beaten without pressing the start button a single time. Everything you have to do in the start button, equipping items, equipping important equipment, all those kinds of things, nothing like that will be done. The start button will not be pressed, and Hyrule will be saved. So, who are the authors of this run? Um, this run was made by me and OMG a Tree. And by me, I only did the first five minutes, so OMG a Tree did yeah. everything else, so he's a god. Yeah, this one is coincidentally roughly the same time as the previous one, actually. Just so happens to work out like that. So yeah, um, for those of you who are familiar with uh, the Mario 64 A button challenge, where like um, you try to beat Mario 64 with pressing the least amount, pressing the A button the least amount of times possible, um, this is sort of like Ocarina of Time's equivalent, where the A button isn't you know, quite the same importance as Mario 64, but what is important in this, in this game is all the different items you use, and you have to equip those items, and so restricting yourself to not equip any item, period, and somehow beat the game is going to be quite an interesting feat. Hello. Yeah, it'll never be better than zero pauses. Yeah, there's, there's nothing, there's nowhere to go lower than this. This is it. We got to the bottom. Like, it was interesting seeing over the years how, like, Majora's Mask went from five down to two, but now this is max. Yeah, what, what's actually really interesting is uh, previous, uh, previously, uh, any percent, it wasn't like any percent was actually one pause before this, it was actually two pause. And not only that, but All Dungeons was also two pause. So it was kind of weird that um, All Dungeons and Any Percent both had the same pause number despite being, you know, significantly different in terms of um, content, in terms of what you actually have to do. But finally, Any Percent is down to zero pauses, and <laughs> the low tedness is already showing. But uh, that's that's fine. This is my movement. Okay, I'm so, really good at Ocarina of Time. Okay, so to explain what why this is going to look like this. So this trick was just found a few days ago. It is ridiculously precise. It is precise down to one thousandth of a unit. Uh, I'm sure that setups will be made to make this a bit faster in the future. But for now, um, this was the method, I guess, of getting this incredibly precise position. So what he's going to do here? Go ahead. <laughs> this was the best I could do to get this set up. Because the X position <laughs> was so precise, what I found was if I moved left at the slowest possible speed, I can increment the X value at the smallest possible amount, and then I move right to adjust for Z. I couldn't get anything better than this. Yeah, so again, this is incredibly precise, and since he's holding something, um, there's not really a whole lot of movement options <laughs> yeah, like to, uh, to make this much faster. So anyway, what he's going to do is, using this rock, he can talk to the guy, and the rock will push him through at the same time as he talks to him, which will happen in just a second.
Actually, yeah, the guard's just gonna get bored and let him in. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, just to put it into perspective, like... Link normally runs at all around 11 units a frame or so. Back walks like 13 and a half. And we're or out. Maybe. So, like, to move in increments of one one thousandth of a unit. Yeah, it's, it's incredibly precise. So, yeah, that's the trick that was found just a few days ago, and that trick is what made this all possible. As we will soon see. So, for those that can't read Japanese, basically what's happening in this cutscene is that Sari is like, oh, you want to do zero pause? Take this ocarina. So, just keep like a mental note in your mental notepad or real notepad that there's some foreshadowing cutscene happening. Also, just to um, say more stuff about the Force Escape. So, Force Escape has actually had many, many different methods of getting out of the forest over the years. There's methods to clip through the guard, methods to get on the bridge from Lost Woods, methods to get out from uh, Zora's River, or the, the Lost Woods warp to Zora's River. There's so many methods of Forest Escape, but every single one requires at least one item. Whether it's sword, Deku stick, Deku nuts, Deku shield, one of these things is always required to get out of the forest. So this is the first time we can actually get out of the forest without any item whatsoever. I still really like the Deku scrub hover. Yeah, that, that's still a really cool method. Yeah, you should note that without pauses, you literally can't do anything. Even if you got a sword or a even if you're pauses, uh, you're literally stuck with whatever you, you have. You cut out, you might want to re-explain that. Oh. Okay, basically what I just said is, since you can't pause, you can't equip anything. So as Child Link, you literally have nothing that you can work with. You can't have a sword, a shield, or any items. You're just stuck with what you have. Yeah, and this game has lots and lots of glitches, but basically all the glitches involve the items you get. And so without the items to equip them, you're a lot more limited than usual. I gotta get some rupees. Who's going to use these rupees to buy a shield and some Deku Nuts? In case anyone forgot from the last run, you can skip the door of time without any spiritual stones. Yeah, you sure can. Not only can you do it without any spiritual stones, you can do it without a sword too, or without any items. And now we're adult without equipping any items, although we have bought some items. So I guess this is probably a good, a good time to explain why buying those items is important. So, even though you cannot pause to equip anything, when you become adult, the game does automatically equip certain things. Uh, it equips 
a shield if you have one, the Master Sword, which you can't avoid, Deku Nuts if you have them, and Fairy Ocarina if you have them, and also bombs, regardless of whether you have them or not. Um, so when this whole cutscene is done, he will actually have Sword, Shield, Deku Nuts, Bombs, and Ocarina equipped. Bombs, uh, he doesn't have a bomb bag or anything in the bomb slot, so bombs, it's essentially just like something that's there but won't actually be used. Um, but he does have access to Ocarina, Deku Nuts, and Sword and Shield. So that'll help at least a little bit in the quest to save Hyrule without pausing. Yeah, so basically what we have after we get out of this cutscene, we're not going to be able to use anything else to beat the game. So basically we just need our nuts and a sword and an ocarina. That's all yeah. we have to work with. Yeah, this is the one place we don't have the, bombs. Yeah, this is the one place in the game where it auto equips stuff for you. Other than that, there's just nothing else that auto equips things for you. You're all on your own after this. In theory, you could get the bomb bag, and that would let your the bombs on your C down button work. But in order to get the bomb bag, you need either some other explosives or a strength upgrade, and one of those would likely require pausing. Um, something else to keep in mind, last run, when we were in this situation, we did a pause to save exit we're not going to have that ability anymore so try and think of a way that you can just escape temple of time without being able to save warp yeah that's a good point gotta get it get out of here without pausing and without getting blocked by the door Once again, Sheik's just telling us the answer for how to escape this room, so we're good. Resetting your save? I mean, you could reset without saving, but it wouldn't help you any. But you can die and save. Yeah, so he's just gonna have to clip out of here twice in a row, void out, and die. And then just or, save and reset from there. Well, save and not continue. Or did you mean reset without uh, hitting the reset button on your console? So just die in front of Sheik. So you can use the game over screen to go back to the title screen, thankfully. And now we've escaped Temple of Time. Press start. <laughs> yeah, the title screen is encouraging you to press start, but you can actually get past the title screen by pressing A. We will we will not press start. Woo! <laughs> 
This is just showing like, off. Yeah. He didn't have to do it. He was under time crunch and he still did it. Mad man. And then he rolls through Kakariko. Now I know what you're thinking. Egg? Yeah. Just keep a mental note of it, it'll come in handy later. Cross Hyrule Fields. Just for the nostalgia factor, like it's 1998. Gotta get some rupees. Okay, so this isn't actually, he's not actually like being that bad. He has to wait until night before entering Lost Woods here. He's actually just killing some time. No need to be optimal when you gotta wait anyway. Note that in the pacifist run, we weren't allowed to kill time. Makes sense. Alright, so now he's gonna get into Deku Tree. We can get onto this house and do a hover off his Skulltula. And do a mega flip out of the hover into this out of bounds area. And from here, he can bypass a load trigger that loads the back part of Kikuri Forest with the Deku Tree. And this prevents the Deku Tree's mouth from loading. So you can walk straight into the Deku Tree as a doll. And now we're just going to beat all the dungeons. Yeah. Oh, looks like he's having some trouble. Oh, it's alright. Standard Deku Tree stuff. Okay, add another line to your mental notepad. Because that web breaking will be important later. Alright, I'll remember that. What's in this room? A compass, so we don't get lost. That's nice. So this platform, if you hang off it as a dolt, uh, you can just sink through the ground with it and you can 
Let go, jump slash, and recoil straight into Goma's room. Yeah, so the boss, the boss loading zones in dungeons are always loaded no matter where you are in the dungeon. So as long as you can get to where the loading zone is, then it'll work. And here's where the auto-equip nuts will come in handy. Yep. You need some item to be Goma. And so, nuts are the item of choice here. Except oh, he actually died. died. Yeah. Goma died, but so did Link. Okay, so now Goma is dead, the web is broken, and he has an egg. Yeah, normally for that wrong warp, you have a bottle. Or Ferrari's Wind. Yeah, but neither of those... Doesn't have either of those right now. So, it just beats Decatree and leaves. Maybe setting up for something later. Looks like how I play the game. I love how uh, back when he was going to Kakariko, you mentioned the Z sliding, and then like after that, we haven't really seen Z sliding. We're in a significant time crunch. The Z yeah. sliding was probably easier because it was a straight line. Yeah, true. Oh, so this is a really neat trick. So, you can use that ladder to clip out of bounds. A uh, ladder kind of pushes you through the ledge here. And so Zora's River is split up into two different areas. Uh, Lower Zora's River and Upper Zora's River, and there's a loading trigger in between the two. And so, he's going to use the out of bounds water here to swim past the load trigger. And so he can get into Upper Zora's River without anything loaded bunch of emptiness up here. The collision is still loaded, but uh, no textures or anything. And most importantly, the waterfall is not loaded. The game gives you a hint about this when it's like, you need to put the waterfall to sleep. This is what it meant. And so now I can get into Zora's domain. So last time he used the egg, but now since you can't pause, yeah, you can read use that. The, read the sign here. Yeah, so reading that sign messes with the red ice loading and will unfreeze King Zora. And also, just like last time, he's gonna. Uh, hold shield while King Zora is supposed to give you the Zora tunic, and he will instead give you the eyeball frog. And this is the reason for the egg. Um, you have to have the egg in your inventory, or at least something in that item slot in your inventory, in order for him to give you the eyeball frog, or else he'll just give you Zora tunic. And okay. so that that gives a timer. Yeah, you can cross egg off your mental notepad and put a new line 
for Frog, because that'll be important. But where are we off to now? It looks like the direction of Lon Lon. Okay, now he's gonna talk to Ingo. Psych, we're going to the hey. cow house. Dang, he cares more about cows than Ingo. Gonna finish up this puzzle here, get that heart piece. But wait a minute, he's a doll. Whoa. He out of bounds? Alright, we got like 35 seconds to solve this. So this is what C-Up looks like when you're not in first person. Link nodding his head. Yeah, the camera freezes when you're out of bounds for a little period of time. Yeah, so here he has to try to void out right as the timer is expiring to freeze the timer. Yeah, the timer's stuck at zero. Now we're gonna not talk to Ingo. So I wow. They got me there. So I know there's a quick text with this Ingo text. Is that no? Okay. Never mind. Okay, well he did he did um use the <laughs> this music is great. <laughs> So he did use the uh, the timer unfreeze, so he used Ingo's text to unfreeze the timer and this caused uh, this caused a warp back to Zora's domain, uh, but with the music playing. Uh, so we call that trick Windy B, because well, Furrow is when used to be the only way to do it, but basically you're in like that minigame state. And in this state, only your ocarina and your B button's usable. Yeah, th this is the uh, the horse mini game you normally just play and ride around a horse on. That uh, you normally, if the timer didn't expire there, that's the mini game you would have played. Uh, something else to note: yeah. if you ever dim your B button in this mode, you can't undim it. And since you want to use your sword, you have to be careful to avoid the. Yeah. So, so is the only item that's usable right now is Ocarina, and it will never be unusable. Same with his 
uh, nuts and bombs. They are not usable right now, and they won't become usable until the glitch is deactivated. Get ready, get open up your mental notepad because you're about to add another line. Okay, we're just going to the graveyard to pay Reggie respects. Add that to your notepad, soon, man. It'll come up later. That's it. We just went there for the graveyard and nothing else. I assume that cutscene is most likely important for some kind of wrong warp. So that that side hop over the water there was important again because the B um because the B button cannot be dimmed. If he goes in the water, that actually deactivates the glitch because the water dims your B button. Find this Z slide in your mental notepad. It's not going to be important later, but you can just put it there anyway. So it looks like we're going back to the Deku Tree. I guess even without the Sculptula, you could still do the old Octorok hover. Oh no. That doesn't sound fun. Okay, this is why we broke the web. Yeah, so if you want to break the web in Deku Tree, you normally would have to climb the vines, and climbing dims the B button. So again, in the... Uh, because you have to avoid dimming the B button at all costs, that's why... Um, that's why the web had to be broken. But wait, he dimmed the B button. Yeah, I'm really confused. I can explain. Basically... If we didn't break the web, uh, the boss key skip that we did before, where we did it from the compass room, that wouldn't work because you need the sword to do that. But for here, if you just have the web already broken and come down here with this trick, you can 2 3 1 skip and get to Goman's room just fine. So now that we can't use sword, literally the only thing that we're able to use now is the ocarina and nothing else. Yeah, so the fact that he dimmed the B button means that the sword is no longer usable, period. The, the moment that it gets dimmed. And so here's the reason for that long, long glitch in the first place. Because he did that glitch to allow the ocarina to be used anywhere, he can use the ocarina on the blue warp. Normally you would use an, a bottle on the blue warp to allow yourself to move, but the ocarina can do the same thing, just can't normally be used in boss rooms. But um, because of that long, long glitch, you could use the ocarina on the blue warp and use it to set up the wrong warp from Deku Tree to Ganon's Castle. I know there's at least one person here, probably Jonathan Bed, that has not seen... <coughs> You could treat like Ganon's castle. Yeah, so to just give like a, a quick recap, because a lot of stuff happened. So he got the, the timer from getting the eyeball frog, froze the timer, and used the timer to warp back to Zora's domain as he <clears throat> as he did the uh, Lon Lon game to play on the horses. 
and that causes the glitch where he can his items are usable as they are it, it, only his ocarina is usable but nothing else and so now that his ocarina is usable he can as long as he is careful with the buttons he can use the ocarina anywhere uh, specifically in the boss room and so he can go back to the boss room use the ocarina and actually use it to um, run warp to Ganon's castle. Oh, it looks and like he's having some trouble there. To kill himself. So this is just to deactivate the glitch, because uh, he does need to use a sword on Ganon. Also, Ganondorf's not there anymore. Yeah. That decreases lag. Also, it allows you to use nuts again. <laughs> Yeah, if he went straight to Ganon without dying, he'd just be defenseless. There, there'd be no way to attack him. Which, I mean, we already saw the pacifist run, but I mean, if you're pacifist, you can't just go into a sword fight with nothing. You gotta go go a completely different method, go through a completely different route. The kiss. Well, now we have to beat Ganon without pausing somehow. Well, luckily, we already have all the items necessary. Why the graveyard? I'm 90% sure going to the graveyard was so that the cutscene that happens when you enter the graveyard the first time, I'm pretty sure that cutscene was just necessary for the wrong warp to work correctly. Yeah. So... Probably he had a bad previous cutscene, and if your last watch cutscene is bad, it'll cause the wrong warp to crash. Yeah. So just right. like technical wrong warp intricacies. The cutscene before Graveyard was Mom Line. When Natalia has died, who wrote the route? I forgot to shout out Natalia has died for coming up with the route and Moose. They came up with the route and they're like, okay, use the Mom Line cutscene. I promise it'll work. Winky face. But it didn't. It actually crashes the game. Six. So we had to use a uh, graveyard cutscene to fix that. Good backup. It's okay, it added suspense. It added another mental note that had to be kept track of to keep the viewer guessing. Is there anything in the mental notepad that hasn't been addressed yet? Uh, I think we got them all. The egg? No, the egg was for the eyeball frog. Egg was ne necessary to get the eyeball frog. And so he has to use the last item available to him, Deku Nuts. The greatest weapon against Ganon. Um, if he gets hit, he dies. So, watch out for that. Yeah, I gotta be careful. So using Deku Nuts here was actually a common strategy in really old Ocarina of Time speedruns before we found methods to use the Master Sword and stuff on him. But like, without using the Master Sword, it actually is uh, the fastest method. The fastest non-glitch method, I guess, of, uh, of getting Dan Ganon down on first phase. Can 
Ganon's down. As long as he can do this final slash without pausing, he's good. Alright, there we go. And that's Ocarina of Time beaten without pausing a single time. All your friends that had N64 controllers without start buttons, I have good news for them. Yeah, all they have to do is a one thousandth of a unit precise trick. And lots of other glitches. Yeah, um, we should probably shout people out who actually made this possible. Um, so the, the whole trick that was found a few days ago... Uh, who was it found? I think it was found by... Jolin. Jolin, and also Danny B came up with the idea, and then also it was also worked on by a few other people. I believe Rosewater and... I'm probably forgetting someone. But th there's a lot of people that um, helped make this possible. Rosewater, Danny B, Jolin, uh, Pliny, Natalia has died. Um... Who was the other person that worked on the route? Uh, Moose. Moose, Moose, that's it. So yeah, uh, a lot of work went into making this possible. And again, this was all made possible four days ago. And this was rushed. Uh, that's kind of why the quality of the run, there was, was a lot of, you know, rolling around and stuff. Um, this was, like, rushed to get it out in time for February 21st, but... Um, it's pretty amazing that this is actually possible, that we can actually beat the game without pausing once. So yeah, I, I guess that's it. Hope you guys enjoyed that. How did you like it, chat? Looks like Oops. everyone enjoyed it. Do you guys have any final words? Oh, I was just gonna say I'll see you again next year. All Whatever right. Whatever it may be. I look forward to it. Can't wait to see what new challenge run we'll have next year. Yeah, it was... I mean, obviously the play quality could have been better if there had been more time, but, uh... I mean, there were still a lot of interesting things and surprises, especially at the end in Deku Tree. Yeah, it was still a really neat run. Yeah, it's amazing that, like, all these tricks can come together for something so silly and arbitrary, but interesting. Still finding new things. Yep. All right, Shout guys. Shoutouts again to Omen Geo Tree. Oh yeah, got to give him a shout out. <laughs>